Welcome to episode five of Biology 24-2 Lab, starting the ovaries. Uh, they do a lot besides for just act as glands. So I've called them sex organs that function as glands, but you, want, you can call them a gland. You can call them a sex organ, whatever. You can call them an organ. I don't care about the semantics. So if we look down at the model on the left, you can see I'm going to circle the ovary right there. So that's an ovary. This structure right there that I pointed to represents a follicle. And this structure over here represents a corpus luteum. Now the oviducts and the uterus and all the stuff and the vagina, those are all going to be dealt with in a later chapter reproductive system. But let's find the ovary on this all admittedly small pic photograph of the rat. There's an ovary and there's another one uh, hiding up in there. And you can see that there's some tubes going like this. Right? So now in a rat where they have many, many offspring, you're going to put the actual uh, embryos in those tubes. They call them uterine horns, but whatever. The ovaries at the end of them. So if you see a paired forked structure down in the lower abdomen of the rat or in a model, you know that at the end of those is the are the ovaries. And so on the right, we see some microscope views of the ovaries. Uh, this structure right here is called a follicle. It's a vesicle, basically. It's like a big vesicular container filled with liquid. And inside of each of these follicles, as they develop, is an oocyte. And that's what that little circle there is. And that's the thing that gets ovulated and gets fertilized. Once that oocyte is ovulated, the follicle uh, kind of fills in with sort of a semi-solid mass. And that's what this stuff is right here. It looks kind of like it's open. It looks like the same thing as the follicle, but it's not. This is what you call a corpus luteum. And a corpus luteum uh, means luteal body, uh, yellow body. And it is the structure that results after the follicle kind of collapses. And it's going to be the major product, uh, producer of progesterone. Follicle will produce uh, um, estrogen and the uh, corpus luteum produces uh, both. So moving to the next image, uh, here we go. Uh, the two hormones that are three, I should say, four hormones that we're going to uh, cover. Estrogen, we're all kind of familiar with the name at least, and it has lots and lots of functions. See where it's produced. Uh, some of its main functions are it thickens the endometrium. So the endometrium is the inner layer of your uterus which you need to have thick and vascularized in order for the embryo to implant and then to gestate or to you know grow. Uh, estrogen also uh, helps develop female sex secondary sexual characteristics like uh, breasts and uh, you know wider hips and uh, uh, you know less hair and so on. And estrogen also helps females maintain bone density by limiting calcium removal from the bones. Progesterone, again, lots of functions, uh, only produced by the corpus lutea, sorry, corpora lutea in this case, that's plural. Uh, it is also an aid to implantation and gestation, and it increases uh, female sex drive. Lastly, your lab book only mentions inhibin, but you can't have peanut butter without jelly, so you can't have inhibin without activin. Uh, they are antagonistic, both produced by the ovaries. Uh, activin stimulates follicle-stimulating hormone production, which, if you remember, makes the follicle develop, ultimately resulting in ovulation, and inhibin inhibits it. So you produce these at different times uh, during the month, depending on whether you want to develop a follicle or not. And uh, that's it. Study your photos and other videos.